Back in the mists of time, there lived a noble maiden in the heart of Germany by the name of Uta. We know her by her graceful portrait in sculpture. Her face has become an icon of art history, like an image of Queen Nefertiti of Egypt or Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa, it has been admired for centuries. This is a story of the place Uta called home. Her home area was a wooded valley in which the Zala and Unstrut rivers meet. King Charlemagne had entered this scene shortly before and led a military campaign of 30 years to expand his realm. He fiercely wanted to Christianize the local tribes, the Saxons and the Zorbs. There is evidence of frequent mingling between the newcomers and the Slavic settlers, learning much from one another. It is fairly obvious when observing the villages in the area. The Slavs perfected a well-defended layout of houses and barns over the centuries. They surrounded their villages with thick hedges and moats as well. The newcomers from the west mixed with the locals and both sides adapted, keeping the oval layout but adding a church, a well and a pond, sometimes even a bakery or brewery in the centre. Along with the settlers, knights and nobles also arrived. Some of these noble families grew rich and powerful here, most of all the family of Uta. As securing the border was a task vital to the realm, the rule over the castles around Naumburg allowed for ambitious nobles to become imperial princes. When Uta was in her twenties, these ambitious nobles saw to it that a bishop's seat was moved to Naumburg, where they began to build a huge cathedral. It was designed to show the ambition and achievement of the local nobility, and, of course, to serve further Christianization. The idea behind the huge cathedral was to create a building the likeness of which the local Slavs had never seen. A building so alien and sublime that the pagans, standing in awe and admiration, would convert instantly. In addition to the bishop's seat, the river valley also attracted several monastic orders to build monasteries in the valley. The most prominent being the Cistercian Monastery of Schulpforte. Its monks brought along education and experience in many crafts and technologies, thus driving the dynamic growth of the region. They started growing vineyards on the steep slopes along the riversides of Zala and Unstrut. Of course, they too had an eye for beauty. Their church vied with the cathedral in its display of splendour. The noble families around Naumburg were great patrons of the arts. The Neuenburg Castle was, during its time, a creative beacon and an example to other chivalrous courts near and far. Proud nobles saw the need for adequate representation of their power and ancestry within the new cathedral and donated vast sums of money to erect a West Choir. Around 1240, a workshop was found led by a genius sculptor whose real name and face remain a mystery and who is therefore referred to as the Naumburg Master. We look upon the 12 life-size figures of the donors who started building the cathedral 200 years before and see the mysterious Uta and her vigorous husband Eckhart, the ever-smiling Princess Reglindus from Poland and Count Zitzo in agony. These sculptures are inseparable from the surrounding architecture. They even serve as columns. After the masterpiece was finished and the cathedral stood completed, the region lost its paramount strategic importance. The lands along the Zala and Unstrut lay forgotten for centuries, rarely industrialized, untouched by the destruction of warfare. In effect, Uta's time still remains the defining era for this valley, a showcase of the knightly and courtly culture of the European High Middle Ages to this day. No other place on earth offers such a look into all the dynamics of this era. Its people are very proud of their heritage and they stand ready to share it with the world, nominating it as a UNESCO World Heritage Candidate for 2017.